Reports out there, JJ, you've talked about this a lot. They were looking to hammer out a long term deal before the deadline. That did not happen. JJ, what can you tell us about that? And, and do you think we're going to see a long term deal get done? Uh, you'd like to think so because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and their salary cap situation, they need it to get done. And yeah, they have Tom Brady and Allie Marpet coming off the books, but they also have some dead cap that they're going to have to deal with with those guys. They have a slew of free agents, pending free agents. And Dominican Sue, is JPP going to be back? Leonard Fournette sending out cryptic tweets as he is wont to do. I think a number of those guys are out there looking and saying, well, you know what, I maybe took a little bit less or signed that one year deal last year uh, to try to run it back with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And that's not necessarily going to be the case without Tom Brady in 2022. Uh, I don't love that they ultimately had to tag Chris Godwin for a second second time one because of the large figure at 19 million dollars per year two because he's coming off the injury not that he's not worth a long-term deal just that you want more flexibility in 2022 uh, than that immovable number and then finally does this mean that Carlton Davis is walking out the door because he's a guy who's going to command number one cornerback money not top of the market Jalen Ramsey reset the market money uh, and I'm not calling him a shutdown corner necessarily, Brady, but I think that he is without question the number one corner on more than half of the NFL teams right now and certainly would be with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So it's going to make it a little bit more difficult for them to sign Carlton Davis to a long-term deal if he can hit free agency because some team will absolutely pay him. So the Buccaneers would very much like to uh, reach that long-term deal with Chris Godwin within the next week. But again, this gives Chris Godwin a little bit more leverage now that they've had to establish that $19 million figure for him, uh, you know, they don't want to have to have that going into free agency. So just a touch of leverage right now for Chris Godwin. It's a great point that you bring up. And really in regards to players taking a discount in order to come back and play with Tom Brady, try to run it back, right? Everything's good when you win a Super Bowl. And it's a little bit easier to pitch that. That's not the case anymore, right? Tom, Tom Brady's not your quarterback. He's retired at the moment, at least based on everything we think and then moving forward the rest of your roster hasn't really decided to come back a bunch of unrestricted free agents are out there so because of that if you're chris godwin like this might be one of your last opportunities to utilize the leverage that jonathan's talking about in order to get that long-term contract so it, i mean look if the, the tag's placed on him uh, he should go sign it right away and then they should look to start hammering out that long-term deal and if they don't come to those terms all right a, a year from now you're gonna be looking at him as a potential free agent going out in the free agent market after maybe a couple productive seasons. Here's the hard part about the tag and doing it in consecutive years. What you're creating is the framework for what that, at least in the short term, what a contract extension would look like. It's this year's salary cap hit. It's a third year under the tags hit. And then obviously you're not looking into it past that, but that's the hard part is it goes up exponentially in year two and year three under the franchise tag. But that's the only recourse you have if you're the team at this point in time or if you're the Tampa Bay Bucks with Chris Godwin. So you have to work based on those numbers, and that's really the floor of your discussion or of your negotiation. That's a hard thing for a team because it does eat up so much of your salary cap space or you're paying an astronomical number in a bonus so you can spread it out over future years and it doesn't hit your salary cap. So that's the hard part once you get into year two of that franchise tag for a player is – you really they hold all the leverage in this case you obviously have signed on that you want their services again at a premium for a second consecutive year so now you've really got to open up the checkbook and write in the check that he's looking for for that long-term deal otherwise he's not going to get tagged a third time that we just we haven't seen it we don't see it it's not going to happen in this case either so uh, if, if he is indeed tagged he'll sign it and then they'll eventually sign that long-term deal in the summer if anything's going to get done do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.